in this last uh, section of chapter 34, we're going to start talking and thinking about human populations. So we're going to start with life tables or um, these survivorship curves, um, or I'm sorry, <laughs> survivorship curves are created from life tables, which talk about the probability of being alive after a given interval of time. And I'll just show you the table and maybe it'll make a little bit more sense. So this is for a, a, a given hypothetical group of 100,000 people in the United States. So at age 10, most folks in this group are still alive and have an average of 68 and a half more years to live. At age 20, there has been a decline. Unfortunately, some people do die during this period, and these people have about 58.8 more years to live. Okay? And you can see these numbers are slowly dropping because people do die over their lifetime until you get to the ages of between 60 and 70, you have your um, first major drop, and then between 70 and 80, you have your other major drop. Okay, so this is just showing kind of how many members of a particular group are staying alive and to what age. So the next thing or the next um, tool that ecologists can use to understand populations or human populations are these things called population period pyramids. And these help us to think about the future growth of human populations because we're understanding uh, what proportion of the population is under the reproductive age. And I'll show you what I mean by this. So here is the reproductive age. It's making it kind of broadly from 15 to 44. And this is showing the number of people that are under the reproductive age, at least in Kenya in 2009, which is a pretty large group. Whereas in the United States, there were more people of reproductive age at this time than there were people under reproductive age. So this group down here is going to obviously, actually it's been 10 years, this group down here has shifted up here into reproductive age. And it also gives you a sense for the number of people that are sort of living beyond their reproductive age. So these are, these are your grandparents up here. All right. It is also showing that um, this is Kenya, it's a much less developed country. It's projecting that these numbers for Kenya are going to shift to look a lot more like the United States as well, where you're going to have less people who are under the reproductive age um, and more people who are over the reproductive age. It's also showing the shift here where you have this sort of section of the pyramid sliding up into reproductive age. So the world's population is growing slower now um, due to a decrease in total fertility rate, which has a lot to do with um, women's rate of education and an increase in urbanization, and there are actually a ton of factors that is leading to this, um, but we are growing more slowly in general, at least in um, sort of what you would call uh, modernized countries. So despite that fact, human population increase is still massive. You can see here it was um, pretty low for thousands and thousands of years until we sort of get to the Industrial Revolution here. And based on the last section, what kind of growth would you call this right here? This is, this is exponential population growth. It's very exponential population growth, and it is, uh, frankly, probably not sustainable. So here is um, changes in fertility from these various countries. And it's just kind of showing that there are indeed drops in the total number of children per women. This like dark one here is the number of children per women from 1960 to 1965. This lighter pink one is 2000 to 2005. And you can see as these countries sort of come into the modern era, um, the number of children that every woman is having is decreasing. Now that said, um, there are still a lot of um, fertility issues in less developed countries. Um, there are differences in the more developed and less developed countries. And in less developed countries where things are more um, agricultural, people are still having a lot of kids. Um, and so those numbers are still quite high. Some scientists believe that there is no greater single threat to the environment than the continued growth of the human population. And others argue that um, using less natural resources per person is actually a bigger concern. Okay? There are great arguments on either side. 
Um, my personal opinion is that I think someday, for one thing, population growth will start to slow down everywhere. And the other thing is uh, scientists are really good at coming up with solutions for this kind of thing. I don't know what the solution to this one is going to be. Maybe it's going to be hydroponic growth. Maybe it's going to be moving everyone into cities. Maybe we're going to discover some sort of brand new energy source that's going to make everything better. I don't know what it is, but I'm at least optimistic for now.